Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today's episode is actually kind of a neat one because we've never done anything like this before, but I found a random NCIX PC customer. I gave him a call and I said, hey, we want to feature your system in NCIX Tech Tips. And in exchange, all you have to do is let us keep it for an extra couple of days and you get a free upgrade from the components that you selected to some that will actually help you have a more silent PC gaming experience. So that's what we're gonna be doing today, folks. We're gonna take a very, very nice gaming machine and we're gonna turn it into a quiet, very nice gaming machine. Now the first step in any PC renovation project like this is to take a look at what it is you have to work with and what your goal is. So our goal here is obviously to make this into a silent or near silent gaming machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the side off our Corsair 800D and let's have a look at what overall specs we have to work with here. So first of all, we've got an Intel Core i7 quad core processor. We have a passively cooled motherboard. So that's not going to be a problem because it's already not gonna make any noise. This CPU with the stock fan, however, could be a bit of an issue for us. So that's one of the things that we are definitely gonna replace. When you're making a machine more silent, bear a couple things in mind. You wanna remove as many fans as possible without compromising your cooling. And another one that I consider as my own personal general rule is that a system can only be as silent as the loudest fan inside. So right now, the loudest fan in here, depending on what kind of a load we're putting on the system, is gonna be either this one or the one on the video card. So we're gonna be replacing both of those. We're gonna be using an H70 liquid cooler for the CPU, and we're gonna be replacing this regular GTX 580 reference design card with an MSI Twin Frozer 2 GTX 580 card. So that has a more quiet cooler on it. Now, we also wanna figure out if there's anything else we need to look at. So, looks like this customer, now the 800D is not the most quiet, silence optimized case. So we could have changed that, but it's also not the worst and it has a great aesthetic and a great internal layout. It does have steel construction, which is going to dampen some of the noise, and it's also less prone to vibration than cheaply made steel cases or sometimes aluminum cases as well. Another thing this customer could have improved about this system is the power supply that's here. Now, the TX850 watt is a very silent power supply in terms of the fan that is included with it, but it is non-modular. In the 800D, it happens that we have an enough room to bunch up these cables somewhere, hide them, and not restrict airflow. But if we were using a smaller quiet case, such as uh, Fractal Design Define R3, we would probably have wanted to go with a modular power supply instead of a non-modular design. Next thing to do is take an inventory here. So we got to decide how many fans we're going to put in this case, because it does accept more than even the stock configuration contains. You can see you can put another three in the top, but we're gonna let that just passively radiate heat out the top. We're actually not gonna occupy those slots because our objective here is silent. So we'll find all the fans that we need to replace and determine what exactly we need for them. So here we have a 140 millimeter fan. Here we have another 140 millimeter fan. So both of those are going to be replaced as well with Noctua NFP14 FLX fans. Those are a very silent fan. They also include rubber grommets for mounting and low noise adapters. And in the back, you can see we have a 140 millimeter fan, but I'm actually not gonna be using that because I have to mount my Corsair H70 back there. Now the H70 is a very quiet cooler. The pump is excellent quality, but the fans included are more for performance and less for silence. So I'm gonna be replacing the stock fans in their push-pull configuration with NFP12s. So first we're gonna show you guys the simplest one. This is just a pretty simple fan swap and we're going to take this mid plate fan here which pulls air from the power supply compartment and pushes it up into the main compartment of the case and we are going to take it out and we're going to replace it with an NFP14. So the first thing we're gonna need to do and since we have, actually I'm not gonna bother using my screwdriver for this, since we have to do this anyway because we are gonna be replacing the video card is we're going to take the video card out because we can't actually access the screws that are holding that fan in until we've removed the video card. So I just take out the two screws, undo the PCI Express power connectors, unfasten the PCI Express latch at the back, 
and pull out the stock GeForce GTX 580. We'll put that aside for now. The next thing we need to do is just undo the four screws that are holding in this particular mid plate fan. Okay, so we had to cut that there, sorry guys, but I've got the 140 millimeter fan removed now. And I also had to unplug it from the motherboard. So here I'm just going to trace the wire to where our technicians installed it, right here. And we're going to take that fan and unplug it. Now when we remove it, we find out that Corsair has put a whole lot of thought actually into silencing the 800D as much as they can. They've actually used a rubber grommet, like a rubber insulator, to keep this fan from transferring vibration to the case. Now, the Noctua fan we have is actually not going to be compatible with that grommet because it's a unique 140 millimeter fan in that by default it includes 120 millimeter fan mounts so that it can fit in a wider variety of cases. However, Noctua includes these little adapters, I'm actually going to take one off here, which you just screw into the fan and they will widen the mounting holes to 140 millimeter to allow you to mount it in native 140 millimeter slots. So I'm going to show you guys, once I get that back on there, how we are going to attach the NFP14 to the case without using the stock grommet. So now that I've positioned the NFP14 fan in such a way that the wire leading off of it is in the most efficient possible position to reach my cable management holes in the case. I'm going to go ahead, put that there, and we're going to use the Noctua included rubber grommets to mount this fan. So all you have to do is line up the holes, push the rubber grommet through just a little bit, and then pull on it until it's flush. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tilt the case up so I can show you guys exactly how that installation works. So if I pull on it all the way, you can actually see there's still an isolating piece of rubber in between the fan and the case. And then when I pull the fan all the way through, you can see that there's another bulge that's going to hold the fan in place. So there's rubber that is going to effectively do the same job as this, but just with the mounting grommets. Now when we're plugging the fan in, we've actually got a few options with Noctua fans. We can either take the sleeved lead and we can plug it directly into a chassis fan header on the motherboard. That'll run the fan at full speed, but that's not really what we're going for here. Since we already know this is a well-ventilated chassis and we already know that it's going to work fine on low speed, we've actually got a couple more options. This one, color-coded black, is a low noise adapter. And this one, color-coded blue, is an ultra-low noise adapter. So they're going to undervolt the fan in order to run it at a reduced RPM to improve silence. So I'm going to go ahead and plug the ultra-low noise adapter in, and then I'm going to plug that into the motherboard instead. So this guy right here, the fan for the drive cages, we have no choice but to put a fan on here, but once again, I'm going to use the ultra low noise adapter because I know that the hard drives are not going to require a whole lot of cooling. This system actually has a single SSD boot drive and then a single hard drive for storage, which are both installed in the hot swappable bays, and I know they're not kicking off a lot of heat. But one thing that we did have to bear in mind here is that the mounting system for this fan is actually quite unique. It uses long screws that are not threaded until the very end to go all the way through the stock fan and then screw directly into the chassis. So there's not a whole lot we're going to be able to do in this case about vibration dampening other than just using the included adapters, the 140 millimeter hole adapters, which have a little bit of rubber on them, although I'm not sure how much that's going to help, and hope for the best. This fan is covered by a shroud, so any noise should be further muffled by that. And another thing that you want to do in also in order to make sure that you don't get any undue noise is make sure you don't over tighten it. Because if you over tighten this fan because of the way it's going through the top of the fan rather than the bottom of the fan, you can actually cause the frame to flex by over tightening both sides and then you're going to get some unnecessary noise that way. So you want to go slowly, tighten them just a little bit diagonally making sure you're watching the frame so that it doesn't get over tightened. Then you can double check it, make sure you got like a little bit of wiggle room, a little bit of flexibility. And last thing is of course to run the wire into the back of the case.
So the next thing we're going to work on is removing a couple fans here, which we're going to replace with two quieter fans. So removing the CPU heatsink is no big deal. You just turn all of the push pins 90 degrees, pull them out and remove the CPU fan header and pull it off just like that. So we've got some stock thermal compound on there. We're going to remove that and replace it with the stuff that's included with the Corsair H70. We're also going to remove this fan from the header. We're going to remove the fan from the chassis itself, which also has a rubber grommet. And I'm going to show you guys something pretty neat here. So Corsair, knowing since it's their own product, that the H70 and the H50 water cooling kits do not have 140 millimeter fans built in the ability in their case to mount not only a 140 millimeter fan in the back but also a 120 millimeter fan. So you can see they've got their nice honeycomb grill here and then they've got two sets of mounting holes for 140 or for 120 mil fans. So we're going to be using our NFP12s to match our NFP14s uh, and we're going to be using the H70 water cooler in the back of the case. Now we mounted the CPU cooler, bearing in mind that if you have a case that does not have an accessible back plate, like the Corsair 800D, where we could reach through and we could mount the bolt through kit for the H70 without removing the motherboard, you'll have to remove your motherboard to do that. Now we run into another sort of dilemma. We've got the H70's radiator, which is a 120 mil rad, which we want to mount at the back, but we can't use our preferred method of mounting it to the back using rubber grommets. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the standard mounting mechanism for the H70. The only difference is that we are going to use it with silent fans. So once again paying careful attention to where our leads are coming out. We want them both coming out near the back Okay, closest to the motherboard because that's what we're going to plug them into. All we have to do is position our fans and we're going to use the stock mounting hardware that comes with the H70, which means you need a washer and then a bolt that goes all the way through and screws into the H70 itself for the front fan and then I'll show you guys the back fan in a moment. Now I'm going to start with a little trick that's something that I'm actually not going to do but I just wanted to show you guys in case you wanted to do it and that is the mounting of the second fan on the H70. Now if you can find some screws that are short enough to go or long enough to go through the fan and into the threads here on the radiator but not so long that they go all the way through to the fins of the radiator okay so you don't want to screw anything into those Okay, you can actually mount the fan with that screw just in here and then you can use the rubber soft mounts that are included with the Noctua fans and mount that fan to the case with one of those. Now that will give you a nice quiet mount but it's not very sturdy so as long as you're not going to use your computer that's fine but in this case we're going to be shipping this system across the country so that is not going to adequately hold the heavy H70 and the fans onto the case. So I'm going to show you guys uh, just as a refresh because we did cover this in my full build guide some time ago the technique for mounting the H70 in a case. So you just go ahead and put your back fan onto the chassis itself, run the screws that you need which is four with their washers pre-attached through the fan and you'll need to make sure that the holes are actually lined up when you try and do that of course. It's always a good idea. Once those are all through then all you need to do is position the H70 correctly and screw them in. Now the H70 comes with its own fan adapters, one of which is a really useful one. So this is a single three pin to dual three pin fan adapter and we are, are going to use this one so we're going to plug that into our chassis fan header on the motherboard and then it also comes with a couple of low noise adapters but we're not going to use these ones because I would prefer to use the Noctua ultra low noise adapters. So we're going to go ahead and take our two CPU radiator fans, plug those into the ultra low noise adapters here and then once we've done that we can pull those back a little bit and then we're going to plug both of those into a single header so that if you do decide to use software for example to control the fan speeds you can do it via a single header. 
Last but not least, we are going to replace the stock GTX 580 with the, well, honestly, it's not an incredibly loud card, but it's certainly not a quiet one. We are going to replace that with a Twin Frozer 2 cooled MSI GTX 580. So since we already showed the removal of the card, all we have to show is the installation of the new one. And since I've gone ahead and put the screws into the case so that I wouldn't lose them, I'm going to have to take those out before I put this card in. So I'm also going to have to take off the blue plastic protective covering on the PCI slot as well as on the DVI slots in order to fit it into the chassis. So let's go ahead and push that firmly into place. Then I'll need my handy dandy screwdriver to screw it into place. And then we will connect the power plugs and our system has been upgraded from a high performance gaming machine to a quiet high performance gaming machine. I'm gonna show you guys one little software configuration trick and then we're gonna wrap this up. So we have completed our silencing transformation of this gaming machine. It is still a very, very similar in power gaming machine to what we started with. The only key differences are gonna be a couple things. Number one, we're gonna have way more overclocking headroom than we would have had without the liquid cooling unit on the CPU. Number two, we're gonna have more overclocking headroom on the GPU, or we can do this as well. So this is MSI Afterburner. This is a tool you can use to overclock your GPU. It's also a tool you can use to monitor temperatures as well as to set things like fan speed. So I'm gonna turn off auto fan speed. I'm gonna set the fan speed to the very lowest. I'm gonna click apply. And then because it's running a Twin Frozer 2 with the stock cooler, you pretty much can't do this. It'll get way too hot. But because it's running the Twin Frozer 2, this card will still maintain very reasonable temperatures even at minimal fan speed. So this machine is going to be very quiet when we're gaming no matter what. So thank you for checking out our little guide on silencing your gaming PC. So don't forget to subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips. And also, if you guys uh, wanna leave a comment under the video, let me know the specs of your gaming machine and what you would wanna add to it to make it quieter, that would be great.